Hey everyone and welcome to the final weekly reading vlog for Bacoplathon. I am really excited about this vlog actually because it's going to be another themed vlog. I've actually timed it just about right I think because there's only two books left on my TBR for Bacoplathon and they're both sapphic and it's also Birmingham Pride this weekend so it just felt like everything was coming together in the perfect way so so yeah, this week's read and vlog is going to be reading sapphic books. There are two books on my TBR left to read. I might have said that already. <laughs> the first is Read Between the Lines by Rachel Lacey, I think is the author's name. And then I also have This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal Al Mota. Those are two books that are left on my official TBR. But then I would also like to try and listen to an audio book if I can, if I have time. So that is the plan for this week. I am currently 25% of the way through Read Between the Lines and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's putting a big smile on my face because I feel like I read a lot of intense books last week so I was in need of some lighter books and this is doing the trick. <laughs> this is a contemporary romance about a bookstore owner and an author but the author also works full-time as a property developer. So this is basically You've Got Mail but make it sapphic. Weirdly I actually watched You've Got Mail for the first time earlier this year and I didn't like it. <laughs> I mean it was watchable but I think my main issue was that there was a lot of cheating <laughs> in that film and I just couldn't get on board with it and I couldn't root for the characters but I am loving this so far. This book is what I wanted from You've Got Mail so I'm really enjoying it. You can probably tell from the huge smile on my face. <laughs> so as I said there's two main characters that we're following. It's dual perspective. Rosie who's the bookstore owner. So she owns this bookstore in New York that was also owned by her mom before her so it holds a very special place in her heart but she's just found out that the property development company that bought the building that her bookstore is in they've sent her a letter saying that they're gonna be ending her lease at the end of the year or they're not going to be renewing her lease one of the two <laughs> and then Jane works for the property development company that are closing down the bookstore but also Jane is secretly a writer so she writes lesbian romance books and she's actually one of Rosie's favourite authors but there's a bit of a hidden identity element there because Jane's family have always been quite against her being a writer. They think that she just writes porn and they haven't been very supportive of her. So she's always wrote under a pen name. So when Jane and Rosie first meet, Rosie doesn't know that Jane is actually one of her favourite authors, but also, <laughs> so this is where I feel like things are getting a little bit confusing. It's not that confusing, I promise. <laughs> But Jane and Rosie have actually been communicating through Twitter because Rosie is a big fan of Jane's books. So she got in touch with her and they started writing to each other, but neither of them knows initially who the other person is. I really love the characters so far and I think what I like the most is how both of the main characters love books. And it's not just that they love books, it's that they have this real enthusiasm for books and it's just so nice to read about. It's just given me all of those warm fuzzy feelings that I want from a contemporary romance and it's set in New York as well. I might have said that already but it's set in New York which is one of my favourite cities and I'm just having a really good time with it so far. <laughs> Jane in particular is really interesting because her passion is writing and she really wants to be a full-time author but she can't afford it right now and also she needs to come to terms with I guess telling people and being being honest about her passion and her dream and it's just I, I I can't wait to carry on reading this book tonight I'm gonna just settle down and get cozy and yeah hopefully read as much of this book as I can it's flowing really easily and I'm really struggling to put it down when I do pick it up so I might update you when I'm around the halfway point or two-thirds of the way through or I might just binge the whole thing tonight and then update you when 
I'm done but yeah I'm really glad that this vlog is off to a good start because I have a good feeling about this book. It could be one of my favourite books of the year. It might be too early <laughs> to say that but I can't see it being less than four stars at the moment. Obviously I'm only a quarter of the way through but I'm really enjoying it that much. I feel like such a nerd because I'm literally just sitting here smiling at this book. It is so cute, so adorable and I just love the two main characters. I like how they're both a little bit awkward so there's been a few moments that have been really cringy but cringy in a funny way <laughs> that's making me laugh so I don't actually mind it so much. How is everyone doing? It is Friday lunchtime and I had a very exciting parcel arrive this morning which I'm very excited to open. I need scissors so this is the September book for the Goldsboro Sci-Fi Fantasy Fellowship. That's really difficult to say. <laughs> the Goldsboro Sci-Fi Fantasy Fellowship, which is a monthly book subscription where every month they send you a new hardback sci-fi or fantasy book. Ooh, it's pretty! Hi. So the September book is Mind Walker by Kate Dillon, which I'll hold up to the camera just so you can see it in more detail, but it also has these purple sprayed edges and it signs by the author as well. I'm pretty sure that all of the Goldsboro books are signed and they're also numbered so you know what edition you've got. I'm going to try and summarise what this book is about just based off the blurb but this basically follows a main character who has a supercomputer grafted to her brain and she only has 12 months left before it kills her so her time is very quickly running out but she works for this corporation and her job is is to take control of people's minds and guide them to safety. I'm not sure why she needs to do that. It says here that she's very good at her job and she hasn't lost a single life yet. However, a critical mission goes south and she's forced to run away. I think they accuse her of being a traitor and this is all about her trying to prove that she is not a traitor, but she ends up uncovering some horrifying secrets that threaten to undo all of the good that she's ever done. So, sounds intriguing. I've heard that this is very fast paced and it's very action packed. It's literally 340 pages, so hopefully it'd be quite a quick read. I'd really like to fit this in actually before the end of the year because I haven't read many YA science fiction books and this does sound really interesting. I feel like it's the kind of book that I would enjoy. I also wanted to do a very quick reading update because I'm now 60% of the way through Read Between the Lines and I'm still enjoying it. However, I'm a little disappointed because I feel like it's starting to lose its magic a little bit. The thing is that I know that this is more of a sweet romance rather than a super smutty romance and I'm okay with that because I actually like how the characters are so cute together. However there's been one sex scene that I found really underwhelming and it's made me question whether these characters actually have chemistry because that's the whole point of a sex scene in a book is that it's meant to show whether the characters have a connection and whether they have chemistry but in this book it felt like the sex scene was just there for the sake of it and that it was rushing through everything just to get it over and done with and it was yeah really underwhelming. It felt very formulaic and it left me thinking what was the point? Like what was the point in including that when this could have just been a closed door romance? Like not every romance book has to have sex scenes but if you're going to include them then make sure that there's some substance there because otherwise it just ends up feeling flat. Didn't expect to go off in a rant <laughs> right then but yeah I'm probably gonna try and finish this tonight because I almost finished it last night but I was feeling tired so I ended up watching booktube instead. I mean to be fair I got this for free through um, what's it called Amazon First Reads and I think it's on Kindle Unlimited as well. I think my prediction right now is that it's going to be four stars but obviously it depends on the ending. I've seen reviews that say that the third act drama in this is really pointless and it's 
really annoying. So yeah, nerves about that because I was loving this book so much in the beginning and I'm just a little bit disappointed now. Not like super disappointed, but I was convinced that I was gonna be giving this book five stars. I mean, I cried <laughs> around the halfway point because it was just so adorable and I was loving it so much. But I mean, yeah, yeah, what can you do? <laughs> okay, so I have literally just finished Read Between the Lines and I think I'm gonna give it four stars. It was almost a five stars, but I felt like it was starting to drag a little bit towards the end and the third act conflict annoyed me so much because it didn't make any sense. Like the characters were so frustrating and I didn't understand where they were coming from. It felt like one character was annoyed at the other character for a reason that wasn't even her fault. It just, it didn't make any sense. It annoyed me, <laughs> but I'm still going to give the book four stars because I enjoyed it overall and I would recommend it if you're looking for a sweet romance and especially if you like books that are about books or that are about writers because Jane is obviously an author and I really liked her character actually. I really liked how in the beginning she was quite introverted but she grew throughout the book and yeah it was just it was really nice to read about. I am gonna go to sleep I think now because it's coming up for 10 o'clock and this week has just drained all of my energy. I don't think I've mentioned yet in this vlog actually. I mentioned it in a previous vlog but I'm moving house in two weeks so there's a lot of stuff I need to get done before then. Mostly decluttering and packing and just organising and my house is chaos at the moment from all of that so it's just it's been a long week <laughs> but I am going to make a start on this is how you lose the time war tomorrow on the train into Birmingham because I think I mentioned I'm going into Birmingham tomorrow so I'll have the 40 minutes on the train in the morning where I can read. Backyard of your old farm in the summer. Stay there for three weeks where we learn to love each other. Wrote you a letter, sent a message to the captain. Skip to the present, haven't been so happy ever. There is so much I need to get done today and I don't want to do any of it. <laughs> All I want to do is stay in bed and read. So yeah, lacking in motivation today. However, I am joining sprints on Joanna's channel later. So I should be able to get plenty of reading done then and I can continue packing this evening. There's less than two weeks to go until I move and I am in no way prepared. <laughs> I did make a start on This Is How You Lose The Time War yesterday, but I'm not really enjoying it. So I don't know whether I should just DNF, but because it's such a short book, I think I'm gonna try and push through because I really like the concept. I like that it's about these two rival time travel agents and they're trying to outsmart each other. So they're moving back and forth in time and they're making small changes that then impact on later stuff that happens. I feel like I did a really bad job of trying to explain that. <laughs> but basically they make small changes in the past that benefit their faction in the future. So it's really interesting. I really love the concept. I just don't like the writing because it's purple prose and purple prose can be very hit or miss for me. And I think this is just a little too purple for my personal taste. So I'm a little disappointed, but I'm gonna give it a good shot. I'm gonna carry on reading because I think I'm only about 10% of the way through so far. So there's still time for me to get more into the the story. I'm 
just really struggling to concentrate on it at the moment, especially because I know that there's other stuff that I should be doing, even though all I want to do right now is read. The book I really want to read right now is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, I think is the author, because I got an arc of it through NetGalley. I think it's already out, but it's being re-released in paperback, maybe, and I've heard amazing things about it, and it's gothic, and it's about Dracula's brides. I really want to read it because it's, you know, that perfect time of year, but what I should really be reading is an audiobook because obviously I can multitask while I'm listening, so I don't know what I'm going to pick up next. I'm just, I, I can't make this decision. <laughs> it's too hard. I also need to film my October TBR at some point. I was going to film it today, but I think I might film it in the week instead. The thing is that I'm going away next weekend, so I want to make sure that I film it, edit it, and upload it before then, but yeah, there's just too much to do right now, and I am stressed. <laughs> okay, so I decided to DNF This Is How You Lose The Time War, because I wasn't enjoying it, and as much as I wanted to love it, if I don't like the writing style, then I'm not gonna enjoy it overall. The writing style isn't gonna change <laughs> the further that I get into it, so I've decided to put it down. I might pick it up again at a later date, depending on how I'm feeling, but while I was on sprints, I made start on A Dowry of Blood, and I'm already 60% of the way through, so I think I made the right decision, because if I'd carried on with This Is How You Lose The Time War, then I think it might have put me into a reading slump. I could feel it when I started reading A Dowry of Blood that it was taking me a while to get into it, and I think it's just because I was starting to slip into that slump, but I'm 60% of the way through A Dowry of Blood now. I read that much while I was on sprints. Did I say that already? I can't... <laughs> I'm forgetting what I've already said in this update. I am tired and I need to get food after I've finished recording this clip, but I'm really liking A Diary of Blood. It's exactly what I want to be reading right now. It feels very gothic and I love the atmosphere and it's a really interesting writing style as well. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's written as if one of Dracula's brides is writing a letter to him. And I don't usually like second person perspective perspective, but it works in this book and I'm really enjoying it. I think I could actually finish it tonight because according to my Kindle, I only have about 50 minutes left. I never know how accurate those predict and predictive things <laughs> on Kindle are, but I could finish this tonight. I should be packing. I need to stop doing this. I need to pack. That needs to be pro my priority tonight, but I'm really enjoying this book. So I don't know. I might pack for a few hours and then maybe try and finish this tonight or maybe I'll get up early tomorrow morning and try and finish it then. I don't know, I don't know where I was going with that train of thought but I need to go get food so I will catch up with you actually probably when I finish this book. It is so cold today, but I am not putting the heat on. I refuse. <laughs> I've been wearing my dressing gown for work today, and I've just taken it off, obviously, to film this clip, and I can tell the difference. <laughs> I might actually go for a walk after I've finished filming this clip, before it gets dark, because I think it might actually be warmer outside than it is inside my house right now. <laughs> anyway, I did end up finishing A Diary of Blood this morning. Technically, this this afternoon I finished it off on my lunch break because I tried to read some this morning when I first woke up but I could feel that my eyes were slowly closing and I just wasn't in the mood to read so I finished it on my lunch break and I want to give this five stars which I wasn't expecting going into it like I obviously thought that I would like it otherwise I wouldn't have picked it up but I really enjoyed it I felt like it just got better and better as it went on because there was this tension that was building up. There isn't really much plot, it is basically a about this main character narrating her life and she talks about how it felt to be in this abusive relationship with Dracula and how she reacted every time he brought someone new into their lives. It was a really interesting writing style, it was a really beautiful writing style as well I will say, like it was very gothic and very atmospheric. I think if you do like atmospheric books or books that are more about the atmosphere rather than the plot then I would 
recommend this one. I think it would be a perfect book to read around Halloween because it is very gothic. Considering that we do spend the whole of the book inside the mind of this one main character, I thought that the relationships and the character development were done really well. I think actually the relationships and how complex they were, that was probably my favourite thing about the book. It's polyamorous, I don't know whether that's obvious from the synopsis and the fact that this is about Dracula. If you are squeamish about anything to do with blood or gore then I don't know why you'd want to pick up a book about vampires <laughs> but just in case there is quite a lot of that in this book. I mean I didn't think that it was over the top but yeah I still wanted to mention it just as a general content warning. I think I am going to end the reading vlog here though because because I've technically finished my readathon TBR now. Obviously I didn't end up finishing This Is How You Lose The Time War because I DNF'd it, but I was reading that to fulfil the prompt to read a book that features romance and A Dowry of Blood features romance. It's also sapphic as well, so I can also technically class it as fitting the theme for this reading vlog. I don't know where I was going with that train of thought, but yeah technically it also so fits the theme for this reading vlog so everything worked out right in the end. <laughs> I did also quickly want to mention I don't know realistically how much I'm going to be uploading now over the next few weeks. I still have my October TBR to film which I'm hoping to do tomorrow so that video should go live possibly before this one, maybe after, we'll see. I don't know, I need to work out my upload schedule <laughs> but yeah I would like to keep on track with doing weekly vlogs while I'm moving but if I don't read anything then I'm not going to have anything for content <laughs> so we'll see if that actually happens but yeah thanks for watching if you made it this far let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books that I spoke about in this vlog and let me know if you were taking part in Bookoplathon and how much you managed to read don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me and I will see you next time bye <laughs>